Hello and welcome to the Nope Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Today, I have something a little bit different for you. The topic is resilience under fire. That already has my attention. And I'm welcoming my guest, Magdalena Raj. So Magdalena, before we go into anything, what we were chatting about before we hit record is how you work with high achievers. And I just said, like, let's not start with that because my people will be like, oh, no, I'm not a high achiever. And you had such wisdom. I wish we were recording there. So tell me about how you define a high achiever. Well, that's the funny thing is that so many of us, and I say us because it took me many years to get that I actually fit in that category, don't identify that way. We are usually in the category of I'm a hard worker. Right. And then you get the other stuff in there that is maybe it's a bit of the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's a bit of the perfectionist. Maybe it's a bit of those other things. But you really want to get the thing done. You want to do it well. And then you want to, you know, accelerate and grow along the way. And so often you go, I'm not running the country. I'm not running the company. That's a high achiever. I'm not building ships to go to Mars. You know, I'm just over here doing 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 my thing. (laughs) <laughs> so that's what we were saying that is so many of um, so many do not identify that way but if you actually looked at what they do and how much they get done and especially that little corner of it that's the multi-passionates you know the ones that are good at so many things all that achievements going on and it's like so natural for them they don't give themselves the box they don't check it A hundred percent. I think that's such a great point because at the moment I personally am on technically a sabbatical and I was chatting to a biz friend the other day and she's like, you're writing a new book. You're still doing your podcast. You have a weekly YouTube live. Now you're doing free coaching. You're the busiest sabbatical person I've ever seen. Right. Right. And you would, do you self-identify as a high achiever? No, no. It's like, yeah, no, to me, for me personally, that's why I love talking to people. What, how do they define something? High achiever, I would be like, well, I'd be the primary income earner in my family. Like high achiever means like big income and big status and all this sort of thing. And when you said hard worker, I was like, oh yeah, a hundred percent identify as that. But um, I find it interesting. So when we're leaning into your topic, resilience under fire, tell us more about this, please. So I, you know, I, I played around with different titles as I look at things and try to say, what is the thing that actually hits? And one thing that everybody in this unclassified high achiever (laughs) has an amazing amount of resilience. So you can bundle in that with kind of determination and, um, and a willingness to go above board, right. To take the extra step to get it. Sometimes you like a challenge and you go, I'm, 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 I'm going to get this sucker. I'm doing it. I don't care if I'm here at night and I've got the saw and I've got the drill out and I haven't done it before, but you know what, I'm going to figure it out because I'm not going to bed, leaving this thing like whatever the thing is that, that keeps you going. Right. But a lot of times what we do is we draw from ourself. And so we're pulling all this energy, we're pulling all this energy. And it's the thought of how does it go back? And what, mm. I, what, I, what I, you know, I mean, we think of it sometimes as investments, right? I'm working on a job or I'm doing this and I'm building my career and my career is coming along and I'm really successful and I'm, I'm still going towards that future, right? There's a point where investment shifts to borrowing and then you're actually like, bar- you borrow on your tomorrow and you don't even realize it. And that I think is for folks that sit in that bucket of not recognizing the high achiever, not recognizing some of the other things that come with it, they're playing all out. And this isn't to say don't play all out, but there's a reason there's called a term like peak performance. If it's not peak performance, then it's just, it's just a line. It's just a straight line. If that's what it's going to be all the time, right? You know, if you're a mountain climber, what's the point if all the peaks are the same level? Yes. So you get to go up it, but then you have to kind of come back on the other side. And that's where the give back to the other parts of our life don't always come into play, right? We, we get on that freaking seesaw. Sorry. I'm a little passionate about it. Oh, you don't to be sorry. This is a show with fruity hate- languages. Most welcome. <laughs> I hate the seesaw concept of work life. Like there's this work thing and there's this life thing. And I, oh, wait a minute. Let me, just, let me just get my little knife. And there we go. There's two diff- different sides sitting on a seesaw. And it isn't because we've got 
we've got so much more. Like I'm looking at your parrots and I'm looking at your pineapples and it's, it's making me think about all those other aspects of life. You know, like I've talked to clients about 12 of them, but it could be anything from, you know, where are you going on renewal? What's renewing you? What is that vacation you haven't taken or the sabbatical you're working through? Or, you know, what are you, what are you getting out that kind of nourishes you back? And so when you're resilient under fire, that's usually when you have to kind of draw on those reserves. And if we're not, if we don't have fire these days, I mean, everything, the news, anything you look at, it's like a bombardment. So how do you kind of move through that without doing the normal thing, which is I'm just going to plug myself in because I'm the never ending battery and yes. light up everything from that. So, I think that's so such that's a great description because when you think about it, like I heard something recently and I don't know the actual stats, so don't quote me on this, but they were saying that the average person today sees more advertisements or, you know, p- bits of information to process in a single day than our great grandparents had in their lifetime. Because then you think about it, say you just go to Facebook and you're scrolling the wall. Not only is it the people that you know, then there's the sponsored ads that are in your feed. Then there's the things that come up on the side and there's the flashing things and there's ads. And it's like, it's a lot for you to process. And then, as you said, if you're always giving and turned on and taking from your reserves to light everything else up and doing nothing to refill that, then most of us burn bright until we burn out. It's so true. It's so there's, there's a refueling and there's also a, how do you do it? So you have a bit more, you have greater ease as you do it. And yes. those are kind of like the hidden culprits. And when I talk to people and they go, geez, I'd like to do more, or I want to make a bigger impact. I want to build a bigger life. I want to include more of my life. Any of those things, the things that hold them up usually are something like around time, mm. energy, and the famous balance. And though it's more than two-sided, right? It's all those other, the other parts that we just kind of stick on the side. I'll get to it whenever. So when you think of that, right, then it's like, well, what's draining them? And there's so many obvious parts. And then there's that non-obvious part. There's the hidden parts we don't think about. So if I stepped aside, aside from this a moment, and if I can, I'd just like to talk about my why. Yes, please so, do. What about my why is I really, I'm into the ripple effect. So what do I mean by that? I want to change how we do human interactions every single day. Mm. Because I think that the daily human interactions are probably one of the greatest sources of either lifting us up and boosting it or draining back from our energy. And when that happens, you can't, like be your best self in situations. You know, if you've ever had that where something goes on and you say something and then afterwards you're like drilling through, you bring up, why did I say that? I could have done this, right? Or why did this or why did that? And I mean, just drive down the street, you've got someone cutting someone off there and maybe they're not even thinking, right? And then there's lots of things can ensue from that, right? A whole ripple effect of interactions based on how someone took that, someone intended it, miscommunicate and all the things that go on with it so if you're in a different state of mind and something like that happens you may be more likely to go i don't need to you know hit hit, hit the horn and sit on it and whatever else or carry it around with you all day like sometimes if you get you know, people get cut off in traffic they're still raving about it at five o'clock in the afternoon at knockoff time when they came into the office at eight and it's like have you not gotten over this it was hours ago um so yeah the little things become the big things and often like the person who cut you off probably they didn't notice you they were distracted it had nothing to do with you but you've personalized it and then carried it and sometimes these things can be carried for days weeks months even years like I remember at one stage I was I had a conversation with my sister I can't even remember the the context of it but I I said something she had no recollection of the conversation like I'd held on to this for quite some time and been quite like pious about it. And she was like, are you sure it was me? <laughs> so <laughs> this is that, and then, but then that can start a whole nother chain where you go, they're just not admitting it. It right? didn't they in that case, but that I could see that happening too. Or the gaslighting. It might not be sister, That's the word but... of the day. Like everything's gaslighting. And it's like, are they gaslighting or was it just not that big of a deal to them that they honestly, it didn't register? 
Yeah, it, 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 it is true. And here's the thing, when they talk about our thoughts, right? And they say that, what is it? 90% a day are repetitive, right? So this plays into, you don't really need that stuff repeating. So how do you kind of feed in something that's better that let that repeat, let the good story repeat. The other side is the part of our brain that's actually doing um, all of the thinking of the new stuff, right? Is where, where whether you, you know, some of the prefrontal cortex work and, the, and, you know, executive skills and management skills, all those pieces in there, that actually chews a lot of energy. Yeah. Right? So, so it's decision-making, it's things like that. So if we're bringing like a pile of drac, you know, whatever this is into that. Now you're kind of decision. Well, I should say this. I could have said that. And you're, you're using that energy to go off there. You're actually, again, pulling off. I, I call it treating yourself like an infinitely renewable natural resource. And I think we all understand they don't exist anymore. Right. 100%. It's just really a path to extinction and how quickly are you running down it? So that's where, those are some of the hidden things. And that to me, I started looking at it going, what changes that? Like, how do I find these hidden places where during the day, I'm not even aware my energy is getting chewed up because mm. I'm thinking of somebody just said in that last meeting, I'm thinking about that. And I can't change the interaction from the other person's side, but how I manage it on my side may help me and how I take it, the energy that I have around me in that space, and then where I go next with it. So what's the ripple that the next person gets, whatever I'm feeling from the thing before, right? And then we're sending out these pools of, of ick, <laughs> for a real technical term, right? No, but I think you've raised such a great point because, you know, we know intellectually that we can't change others' thoughts or behaviours or whatever. And even if we could, would we really want to? Because that's a whole other story. But we can mm. change our thoughts. But sometimes we're like, well, but how? It's just not that simple. But, you know, like for the, the traffic one, I, I live in Sydney, Australia. Or there's a lot of traffic here. Like I'm either one hour from the Harbour Bridge or three, <laughs> depending <laughs> on the traffic. So lots of people yeah. cut in front of me in speeds and stuff. So something I say to myself when I'm driving is like, that is a man taking his wife to the hospital. Like she's having a baby or a woman taking her wife to the hospital. Like a baby is being born and they're in much more of an urgent thing than me. And I'm still in a good mood. Or if I'm stuck in traffic, cause it's a three hour day and not a one hour day, I can sit there being like, I'm going to be late and sweating and turn up or, or I, I literally just sing, I'm stuck here anyway. I can't move. So, <laughs> um, and you look to the side and you see the people in the other cars cause it's multi-laned and they're looking right. like, what on earth is she doing? Cause I'm like, sing it away I'm like because I'm going to be stuck here anyway and I can control how I feel I can turn up frazzled and stressed and late or I can turn up happy but still late <laughs> but I think you know the, the point that you're raising and, and you can change that at any time like I'm not saying I don't ever get annoyed and think oh that person cut me off or whatever but I just remind myself somewhere more urgent to be like yeah, I reacted that way because I love that because I changed my view of that for the exact same thing I said you know what go with God. They got something going on. It's, it's super important. And how do I know? Like, just like you said, they're not running to the hospital. It isn't anything like that. So I hope it isn't, but let it. That's let why I picked baby. Care. Cause I was like, that's and, something good. I don't want them to be yeah, going to yeah. hospital for an emergency, but for a baby, I'm like, yes, bring new life into this world. <laughs> yeah, which, whichever it is that, you know, that's, I understand. I understand that, that that's critical. And, and um, when you, when all this is going on, and sometimes trying to make the decision to behave differently is something you try to do in the moment or we say, well, I'm going to, geez, I'm going to try to do that. And it's like, how can we prep ourselves for that? How do we get the mental fitness that lets us work through that? Mm. And, um, and it's, and those are actually things you can do exercises, if you will, things that you can do that you practice that builds that up. You know, it's kind of funny where, we, we have things of like facelifts and people did this star habit or that. Now, if you look at, you know, TikTok or Instagram, there's people do your exercises, right? That you're exercising the muscles in your face. Well, of course it makes sense. They're there. Why not exercise it? Why not create a different path? And it's no different than with mental fitness that instead of trying to do it in the heat of the moment, why not practice some of these things in advance? And that's some of the stuff I do with positive intelligence like with my clients is that you work through that. So you're practicing. So when that situation comes up, you go, 
okay, I can dial this back down. I can take this over here. I can clear my mind so that the next decision I make may be a little bit better. I love how you bring it to mental fitness, getting the reps in. Because like it, we'd know if we're if we're working out our physical body and you go to the gym and you are currently not fit and you see people like bicep curling, you know, 20, 30 kilos or pounds, and you get you might not even be able to lift it off the table. But sometimes when you hear a podcast like this or you hear people talking like, yeah, yeah, it's easy for them. But it was because of the reps that you've put in, but to have a process or to have exercise, as you said, when you're not in the high stress situation, when you're not in the moment, and then when you forget them, like, you know, we all forget our kegels or whatever until we're like, oh yeah, no, I need to keep practicing them again. Um, that's the thing. Or when you do get called to the situation and you don't do it that great, you're like, this is why we practice to get better. It's not a once moment and then forevermore we're doomed. It's just like, oh yeah, I, I will we'll work on that for next time. And that puts it into that 80% of the auto, auto, the auto, ah, the automatic response, right? The part you're not thinking about, which you really want to do is start to shove more of this in there and replace what's there. So it goes on the back burner. You don't have to think about it. It's your instinct. It's your response mm -hmm. instead of having to stop and say, all right, shut down everything else and let me address this and look at this. So there's kind of like three areas that I think gives a great boost to how you go through this. And one is that you really have to have a vibrant core. And when I say a vibrant core, it's like knowing yourself. So know those proclivities that you may have to go, look, I'm going to go here. Know that and really get the right picture of who you are. Going back to that high achiever or someone not having the perspective or, or um, imposter syndrome, when you're struggling, let's get the right picture in your head Ooh, of yes. who you are at your core. Because when you do that, that changes your filter and how you look at things. And where, so think again of time, energy, and balance. If you're not having to expend it in the moment, because now you're like, I'm living this. I'm not me of 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Let's just be me of now. And me of tomorrow is coming. But if I'm living there the whole time, let's get me real, real, real solid and yes. be vibrant so that I'm constantly refreshing, going, this is me. This is who I am. And then the second thing is how do you support that? So if that's kind of spinning in your center, I think of it like a gyroscope that kind of holds the course. Mm -hmm. It makes your decision-making quicker because you're like, that does match with me. No, that does, not so much. Instead of going through this agonizing, do I, do, I don't know, should I still be friends with them? Should I go to that meeting? You know that that person's going to cut me off. Okay, they are. We're going to take the emotion out of it. We're just going to say, yes, but who am I? I'm a person that finds unique answers in situations. Okay, then that's how I'm going into this. That's how I'm taking that forward because that's now who I sense in my core. The next is your culture. And I'm saying this is a personal culture. We talk a lot about culture, right? The societal culture. Habits, this, who's mm. making, have your own. Yes. And what's in your culture? If it's of achievement or accomplishment, do you have one of celebration? Do you have one of failure? And do you call it failure or do you call it exploration? I tried that, didn't work, move on, okay. And it's great for the kids. What's the culture you accept and you take and how do you look at that and how do you build it? So then it's the people you surround yourself. Sure, it's those other things, but really it ties back to your values and your core. How do you express that and where do you go with that? And we are a lot of times got a dissonance going on between those. Right. I don't feel about this. I'm my, my guts and uh, because we're not clear. So if you have that core, you're like, this is my gut. This is this is who I want to be in the world. And, and and honor me. And then this is the things that support that. So do you have that culture that says when something happens, I'm going to reflect, but I'm going to I'm going to build new. I'm going to reframe. I'm going to own my story. And then the last piece is how do you do the dynamic alignment? How do you keep it going? Mm. And that's where the mental fitness piece comes in. And I talked about it. So something's going on that's kind of crazy in the moment. And you're sitting there and maybe even if you're in a meeting, put your hands under the desk and just start to touch your fingertips. Feel them. Notice something in the room, right? We can say bring it back to present, but for somebody that does, that goes, like, what is that? What does that even mean? Yeah, 100%. But I love yeah, that. I'm sitting here, example. I'm present, and I didn't like what they said. I'm pretty present on this, right? <laughs> so, so let's call that something different let's play it 
how do I bring the me that's my, how do I bring that person back in here that's not just in response to that, whatever that person said or did. Um, I, I was standing with someone once at work and I couldn't believe this, our, one of our, our, our um, bosses came over and she'd been on a meeting in the middle of the night with, I think it was with China or something and to, to help solve some things. And he said, well, we're gonna have a meeting. Do you wanna come in and babble about what you learned last night? And the two of us looked at each other First of all, we're like, is this the 40s? Is this the 60s? Like, what, what is this? And, and, and he kind of noticed from our face that this was not good. Way the line. And, but so there's a response and there's a reaction. Do you think she really wanted to walk in that meeting and talk to people now when that's been, and, and if she did, when she's speaking, what's in her brain, right? So those are those interactions that that didn't need to be said that way. And it didn't help anybody. It caused something else. So we actually took a moment and said, okay, who do you want to be when you walk in there? Don't be defined, you know. I by love what that. Said. So in that, but you had the moment for the pause. You take that, right? And you recalibrate back because you're comfortable with who you are in the face of fire. So that's where you get your resilience under fire is you line up that core in your values, who you are, where you wanna go and how you wanna show up along the path, right? That core, you find the culture and you define it and you go, am I, let's look for examples and ways that whatever comes up today, I can live with those things I want in my culture. I can filter it going, okay, I'm looking now. All right, not that I wanna say bring it on, but if it happens, I got an answer. This is where I'm gonna go because I did my mental fitness and I know how I want to change that situation. And when I'm driving home tonight, I'm bopping in the car because, yeah. I stood up for myself. I spoke my truth and I took, right. took control yeah. of the situation. I love that. Magdalena, yeah, I could I talk to you. others and more. Anyway, sorry. As I say, I could talk to you all day. This is fabulous. I'm, I'm on a roll, but I'm also wary of time. And I know that you have another meeting yeah. coming up. So for the sake of the listeners who are like eating this up and it's like, oh, you've dropped a whole pile of gems. I need to listen back. And then... They want to reach out to you. Um, what do you do and where can they find you? So I'm a high impact coach and I work with those high achievers who are ready to make sure that their success includes the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So the things we talked about today, go up, go to showupasyou.com. Show up as you, because that's really what you want. And there you'll find a download with some great little tips on things you can do to prime before at the beginning of the day, things you can do to kind of wrap the end of the day, and a couple of things in between the day that helps you get back to you. I love you're that. Amazing. You're beautiful and you're fabulous. Yes, I love that so much. Thank you so much, Magdalena. I will certainly be listening back to this and taking notes because I didn't want to take notes while I was in the thing, but <laughs> so much value here for the audience. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. You too. Thanks so much for having me and bye to the parrot and the pineapple. <laughs>